Hello! Today I'm going to show you how to make this bed frame and padded headboard. Now I've dressed my bed but as I've done a tutorial for bedding in a previous video I don't go into detail again but I will link to that video at the end of this one and part three of that tutorial that I'll link to at the end shows you how to make the crocheted granny squares if you'd like to have a go at a blanket as well. So as usual the cutting list is in the description box below. So let's get started. Okay we're going to start by constructing the frame of the bed but I just want to say before we start if you have any of these little fluffy ends on your strip wood always trim them away with your knife rather than sanding as sanding will take away from the length of the piece. So just trim across like that and then you've got a nice straight end. Okay, so I've dispensed some glue onto my piece of card and I'm using a cocktail stick to apply it and we're going to begin by attaching two of the shorter supports between the longer supports. So apply glue to each end of each short support Stand that up on your work surface. And the same with the other one. So we begin by attaching that first support to the inside edge of the long support and you want to make sure you've got a nice flush edge along the top and bottom got a straight edge here and then you can bring the other one in and attach it. Make sure they're all sitting flat on your work surface otherwise they'll, they'll dry into place at an angle. And you can use one of your other supports just to make sure you've got that flush edge at each corner there. bottom as well. And then just really carefully press it all together, making sure it's all staying where it should. And then just very carefully slide that along your work surface and that can be left to dry for a moment. So once you've allowed that to dry off for a moment, we can now attach the other two short supports and we'll be putting one at either end. And when I say about leaving things to dry off for a moment, I just mean a minute to two minutes, just so that the glue has taken enough that we can then carry on with what we're doing without risking this sort of whole piece falling apart. And with a more solid structure, I would, I would probably just carry on. But when you're working on something quite fragile, it's important that you do leave it for a moment for the glue just to begin to take. OK, so I've got some clamps ready here and I've got 10 clamps. And once we've glued these into place, we'll be clamping them. So it's a good idea to have your clamps at hand. So apply glue along the widest edge of the support. And then you can lay that down and you're attaching it so it's flush with the sort of first one. So these longer ones are overhanging at each side. So just press that into place. Just put my finger in the glue again. <laughs> Please tell me you do that too. And then we can apply glue to the other one. And that will sit in the same place at the other end, so level with the short support that's already there. Give it a good press, make sure everything's flush against your worktop, so we don't want to have one strip higher than the other. And then you can clamp it into place. I'm going to put one at each end. Do the corners first just so that you don't end up with one really heavy end. Let's 
see how many we can get on. As I always say, use as many clamps as you can. Always makes for a more sturdy piece. And this will strengthen up once we add those slats. Although they look nice as well, they do really work to add strength to the piece. And that piece can now be left to dry. We're now going to attach a leg into each corner of the frame. So begin by applying glue into each of those little corners. Lay that back down on your work surface and then just press a leg into each corner, making sure you're pushing it right in to that corner join. And work your way around. Make sure the frame is flat against your work surface. each leg a good firm press into place. Once again that piece can be left to dry. So once the frame has dried we're ready to attach the slats and we want to attach them so they're sitting right along the edge there of both of the supports. So let me just hold that up there like that so that will be flush with that end of the bed. And that will just add a little bit of extra support. So begin by applying glue along those supports onto the edge of the frame. Bring it down a little bit as well. first one into place and I've left about a millimetre at either side. And you don't need to measure at all, just do that by eye just so you've got a little bit of frame overhanging at either side there. And these aren't going to be seen, these are really just for support and obviously for gluing the mattress onto. People going by with their dog. It's really hot again today, so I've got all of the windows open and the back door. So you might hear a little bit of noise throughout this tutorial. <laughs> okay, so I've turned that around and I'm doing the same at the other end. same thing again. Just use your fingers to make sure it's flush along that end. Get it lined up and then you can squeeze those together and I've just put my finger in the glue again. Just get a piece of kitchen towel, wipe that off. Okay, so what we're going to do now is find the centre of our support and that, that will be where our next slat goes. Now, don't have to be too precise here. And if you think you can measure that by eye, then just do that and stick your next slat across the centre. But I am just going to put a little pencil mark in between those first two slats. And there, like that. The same on the other side. And then just apply a little bit of glue, this time to the slat, just at each end. <laughs> there goes the recycling lorry. <laughs> I told you it would be noisy today. We live close to quite a large woodland and there's one house, quite a nice house, up in the middle of the woods. So they have their own um, waste collections and 
glass collections and things. So occasionally a big old lorry goes thundering past. Other than that, it's quite quiet apart from the dog walkers. Okay, and then our next two we're just going to lay evenly in there. So no need to measure this time, but just sort of spread them out evenly. Let's put another bit of glue at each end. And one there. Oops. Yeah, sort of judge it so you've got even gaps between as well. Give them a good squeeze down. And then the final two in this bottom section. Like that. And once again, that piece can be left to dry. Whilst that's drying, we're going to construct the headboard support. And we're basically going to glue the four longer horizontal supports between the two vertical supports. So apply glue to each end of the horizontal support. Pop those back down. Like that. And then we're going to attach one to the top and bottom of the first vertical strip. So you've got that nice flush edge along the top and bottom like that. And then we're not going to measure for these two, but just place them so that they're evenly spaced in there. About like that. So they don't have to be exact. This piece isn't actually going to be seen. And then you can bring in the remaining vertical support. Get the top and bottom ones into place first. And then press it all together. You've got time to reposition those central ones if you need to. And I'm just getting it lined up with the lines on my cutting mat and that gives you a better idea if you've got the pieces straight. And again, it doesn't have to be exact because this is going to be hidden at the back there. So very carefully press it all together. Make sure it's all pressed flat against your work surface. Let me just come around that side as well, give it a good press. And then just very carefully slide that along your work surface and that piece can be left to dry as well. Once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, these pieces are ready for paint and we're actually going to attach this to the headboard first before we then attach it to the bed like that. So the bed frame and the headboard support have now had two coats of paint and I've given those a gentle sand and we're now ready to start making the headboard. For that you want a piece of card but nothing too thick because you've got to get your needle and thread through the card and the foam so don't choose something too thick that you're going to have difficulty then getting your um, needle and thread through. And the width of the piece of card needs to be the same as the width of the slat so that's 115 millimetres which is 4 and 17 30 seconds of an inch. And then the height I'm going to leave up to you. If you're doing a more traditional style bed, the headboards are going to be slightly lower and something more modern, the headboards can be quite high. I've sort of gone somewhere in between and I've done mine 83 millimetres high and that's three and a quarter inches. But you could go up to 100 millimetres depending on the look you want. So when we've actually attached, this will be attached to this frame, which will then stick on the back there like that. But the, the headboard will actually sit there and then when it's got the foam on it, our mattress will sit in front of it. So we'll butt up against it like that. So actually put your foam for your mattress into place. And I'm using a 12 millimetre foam for my mattress and that's half an inch. 
pop your mattress into place and, and see how that looks if it looks in proportion you can also go and place it actually into the bedroom where you'll be putting it and see how you like the look of that but have a think as well about where your pillows are going to come to and I didn't want too much mattress showing above my pillow so the pillows will be roughly about there I think they're about 35 millimeters so just under an inch and a half and then I've got about that same amount again showing at the top so it really all depends on the style of bed you're going for but just to remind you I've done mine 83 millimeters high so three and a quarter inches if you want to do it as I'm doing it so the bed can be put to one side for now so we're now going to mark up the card for the buttoning and we're going to begin by dividing it into sections so start by doing a line down the center of your card and do a little mark at the top and bottom so this is across the widest edge and draw a line there you then want to divide each of those sections into half again join those up And then we want to do a line down the centre of each of those sections. And then turn the piece and we're going to mark off the height of the foam that we're using for the mattress. So my piece is 12 millimetres or half an inch. So do a little pencil mark at each edge of what will become the bottom of the headboard and then join that up and as that's going to be tucked behind the mattress we just want to discard that piece so we don't want to take that into account while we're doing our calculation or our buttoning is going to look unsymmetrical so it's just this top piece now that we're going to divide out so turn it again and then you may have used a different height piece of card for your mattress but you want to divide it out similarly to how you've done the top so you're sort of squaring or, or making equal squares in there so you can start again by doing a little line down the center do that at each end And then depending on the height of yours, you might be able to half and half those if you've got a taller piece. But I'm going to now divide those into three. So divide the measurement by three and then do your little pencil marks again. So you'll be doing two pencil marks like that. So if you're using a taller card, sort of measure the width of each of your sections there and see how that divides into each section. And it doesn't have to be exact. Join all your pencil marks up. Okay, then we're going to start along the top line so we want to do a little dot in the center there and then in the center of each half so we've got three dots along the top line and then you really just want to come down and do one on every other line so we're sort of doing it so we've got three four three four three and four we can go into that bottom one And this is going to create those lovely sort of diamonds you see. Like that. So you now want to glue that piece of card to your foam. And I'm using a six millimetre or quarter inch foam for my headboard and you don't want to go too thick as it will look rather chunky and we want it to look nice and elegant 
and remember to glue it so that your markings are face up and I only say that because I've made that mistake before <laughs> glue on there and then spread that out and I'm just using my Gorilla Wood glue for this I find that that works really well with fabric and foam as well as wood make sure you get the glue right along the edges of the card and then stick that onto your foam You can always trim round if your foam's a little bit bigger, as mine is. Press that down. And then pop a piece of kitchen towel on top. Like that. And then you can weigh that down using books. And that can be left to dry. So once my glue had completely dried, I just trimmed around the card just to snip off any pieces of overhanging foam. And I'm going to be using this silk fabric for my headboard, but obviously you can use any fabric you like. If you're going to go for a sort of velvet fabric, fabric try to choose a, a finer one. Don't use anything too thick, as it's just going to look a little bit chunky, and you're not going to get that definition between the buttoning. And then before I start, I just like to go into each hole with a, a slightly larger needle than I'm going to be using. So this is the one I'm going to be using, and I'm afraid I don't know um, the size of it, but you just want to use a larger sewing needle to the one you're actually going to be using to make holes into each of those dots. And make sure you're going right in the middle of the lines. And that just makes it easier when we actually come to stitching. So you want to cut a piece of fabric that is about 25 millimetres or one inch larger than your piece of card on all edges. And we're going to glue the fabric down once we've done the buttoning. So for now you just want to hold it in place and you want to start by going through the central pencil mark. So go through, leave a bit of thread at the back there, and then hold on to that and pull it quite firmly. And then you want to keep making sure that your fabric is staying straight so that it's not twisting around on the headboard. Until we've done a little bit more buttoning, it will keep trying to slide around. So just keep putting it straight. And then you want to go back in probably about a millimeter away from where that first piece of thread has come up and you want to find the first hole you want to come back up through the same hole and not like I did on my practice run and go about a quarter of an inch away so search for that same hole And then come back up and pull it nice and tight make sure all the cotton has gone through and then go again straighten up your card and then go into an opposite hole again you want to make sure that the fabric's not only straight but that it's not sort of puckering up so make just use your fingers to sort of spread it out across the foam so down nice and tightly and then come back in through that same hole And then you can go opposite again, but I'm going to go down and sort of do it in a bit of a zigzag. And 
And you want to keep pulling the stitches nice and tight. Come back up. And you can see it there starting to take shape. And once we glue the fabric down at the back, it will get rid of all the sort of creases and ruckers in the other areas. So keep going and try to go, rather than going in straight lines, sort of go diagonally. And it doesn't always have to be next to each other. Once you sort of reach another area, you can come across and then start working your way around again. Again, okay, making sure that your fabric is staying nice and tight. And just work your way around. So once you get to the end of your piece of cotton, just cast off as you normally would. So just sort of knot that through. And I've still got a couple of holes over here to do, so I'm going to start again there and then I'm going to go through each hole one more time. And it doesn't matter if on your second piece of thread you go through in a different direction. Just remember to keep everything tight. Oops. So I'm going to start off in one of those final two holes. I'm actually going to go back into that centre to start again. Again, you want to make sure you come up through the same hole. And then I'm actually going to work my way round in a different direction. So I'll now go from the centre and come around this way. And this just adds a little bit more definition to the buttoning. I'm really happy with how that looks. So once you've done that, we're now going to glue a firmer piece of card over the back like that to cover the stitching. And so we've got a nice flat and firmer surface to then glue our fabric to or stick our fabric to. So I'm going to use um, double sided tape as I normally do for this sort of project. So apply glue to your piece of card. Careful not to get anything onto your fabric. The lid of my glue is a little bit bunged up there. I'll tidy that up in a moment. And then spread that out. And then glue that down. I don't want to risk pulling my fabric into any glue, so I'm going to do it over here. So just stick that down firmly and then you can weigh that down again. So just pop a piece of kitchen towel on there 
and then a couple of books. Or one big giant book. <laughs> Once the card has completely dried into place, apply a line of double-sided tape around each edge of the card. as well. So before I remove the tape, I just want to show you how we're going to be doing it. So I want to pull over the top edge like that, but not stick it down right to the end. Leave about, I don't know, half an inch or 12 millimetres before the end like that. We'll then be pulling over the side and we'll then be able to tidy up that corner and pull it into a nice little triangle like that and then we'll have that nice little ruffle going around each corner. Now, whenever I'm doing upholstery projects, I always say I don't like cutting the triangles into the fabric. I find that sometimes the fabric can then split at the sort of point of the triangle and you can then see foam on the right side of your piece. So I don't like using the triangles. I always just prefer to leave the fabric whole and just gather it really neatly around the piece. But although I say that, I do get a lot of comments from people saying about cutting the triangles into the fabric. But of course, if that's how you like to do it, then you should do it that way. So I'm just sort of showing you how I do it and how I prefer to do it. But that doesn't mean that this is the right way or that you have to do it this way. Just do it however you're, whichever way you're used to and whichever way you prefer. So I'm going to remove the backing now from the tape. I'm going to do that all the way around. I'm going to begin by pulling that top piece over and you want to pull it fairly tightly but not so tight that you're sort of distorting the fabric. So I'm leaving that flap there at the end and then I want to come in and pull the side piece in. Again you don't want to go right to the end so leave that bit there. side piece. Got a little bit more fabric that side but that's okay. And then that final flap at the other edge there. Before I stick that down I'm just going to have a peep at the front. Yeah, that all looks nice along the front edge and then if you found if you had any sort of baggy edges you could pull this final flap to tighten it all up. But I'm really happy with how that all looks. I'm going to stick that final flap down. Pinch those corners in like that. So you're sort of sticking that bit of fabric down now. And then I'm just going to get a bit of glue on my card and we can tidy those corners up. So begin by pinching in the corner and sticking it down to whatever tape is below it. And then we're going to pull that quite tightly. So you're pulling the sort of remaining fabric into a sort of triangle. Press it down with your fingers. So we're making that lovely sort of little rounded corner. And then we're going to stick down the flaps of fabric at the back. If your fabric reaches onto any sort of sticky you might have left there, then you can stick it down. I'm just going to put a bit of glue under each flap. Pull it nice and tightly. I'm going to 
hold on to that and just tuck a piece under that other flap as well. And press that down. We're going to be sticking another piece of fabric over the back of this as well to tidy it all up before we then attach it to our headboard support. Give that a good firm press down. That's the first corner done. And you can see you've got a nice neat corner from the front edge there. So work your way around and do the same thing at each of the corners. you've allowed enough time for that piece to dry off, cut a piece of fabric to cover up the back and you just want to leave probably a millimetre or so around the edge and then you can either glue this piece into place or you can use double sided tape again and I'm going to use the tape just because the glue can get a little bit messy. So I'm just going to put some strips all the way across Move the back in. And then glue your piece of fabric in place and stick it in place. We now want to attach the mattress support to the back of the mattress and I just want to show you how this is going to fit. So the mattress will actually sit along the edge of the bed like that so that you've got that flush line down the back and onto that part of the bed. And then the support actually the bottom rung of the support actually joins on to that part of the bed. Get my finger out of the way. And then the mattress will sit, the headboard, sorry, will sit there like that. So when you're attaching your mattress to the support, you want to attach it so that the base of the mattress is above that bottom rung. Okay, so let's do that now. So I'll just get myself a little bit more glue. So we just want to apply the glue to the top sort of rungs. the first three and then level with that bottom one along the sides. And when you're working with glue always be careful that you're not getting it onto your um, headboard. That's why I've sort of moved over to this corner of the sheet. Okay, so I'm leaving that bottom section clear of glue and as my sort of button in is a bit tighter along this edge I'm going to have that as the top of my headboard so this piece will be hidden below the mattress. So I want to do it so that, that bit's stuck down there 
and make sure as well that you've got the same amount overhanging at each side or roughly the same amount you don't need to measure it because we'll we'll obviously stick it so that the headboard is level with the edges of the bed you want to get it as central as possible I'm just going to pull that up that side a little bit So I'm leaving a tiny sort of hairline gap above that bottom rung, if you can see there like that. So press that down. Now we're not going to secure this because we don't want to dent the headboard, we don't want to dent the foam. But you can just give it a, sort of a good press into place. And if you do sort of press it that way down, make sure your surface is clear of glue very annoying at this stage to get glue onto the nice edge of your headboard and I'm even sort of reluctant to weigh that down as well because I don't want to flatten out the foam too much so I'm just sort of going to press and hold for a little while until that glue begins to take and when I say a little while I only mean you know a minute or so of that excess glue along there so just leave that to dry off for a little while and then we'll actually attach it to the bed frame so once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry and the support is glued to the back of the headboard apply glue along the bottom edge of the headboard support taking real care not to get it onto your fabric Bring in your bed frame and you want to make sure that the headboard is flush with the edges of the slats it's the same width as them and we're pressing it against that back support there if I turn that upside down give it a good squeeze and then we'll put some clamps on here as well I just show you that from the side that support is flush with that back of the bed there so I just want to grab some clamps so we want to clamp along this bottom edge here and I'm actually going to use my spring clamps because they've got a finer point the mini clamps you'll find they're sort of too big to fit onto that little lip there and they might just ping off that's why it's always good to have a selection of mini clamps in in your toolbox I want to clamp those along there like that and then leave that piece to dry so as I said earlier I'm using a 12mm upholstery foam for my mattress and that's half an inch and it's a nice pliable foam and you can buy this from places like eBay and Amazon and you want to cut it obviously so that it reaches the end of the bed rather than the legs so just cut it to the end of that sort of end support there and obviously butt it up against the headboard there and just cut it as wide as the slats and that then just allows for your fabric that you're going to be using for your undersheet. Now I have already done quite a long video on how to dress a bed and I'll link to that at the end of this one. So I won't go through the whole process of dressing the bed again but I do just want to show you the fabric that I'm going to be using and talk to you about using interfacing as well. So these are the fabrics that I'm going to be using which are all going to need a really good iron before I start stitching. And I haven't yet decided which order I'm going to do them in. And when I'm making a bed, I like to do a cover for the mattress. And then I do an undersheet. And then I have a quilted blanket on top or, a, or sort of like a duvet on top, which I fold back. And then on top of the bed, I like to place a crochet blanket, which I've made here. 
and I've also made a little crocheted cushion to go with it. So just one word about when you're using fabrics. It's a bit of a myth that you can't use stripes and checks and I'm going to be using both in mine. This sort of pale creamy grey stripe here is very subtle but I wouldn't place it directly next to a check. So I think you can get away with using patterns, stripes and checks as long as you don't sort of put them all next to each other. So have some plain fabrics in between to break them up. And similarly when you're placing your crocheted blanket down onto the bed, if I just put that onto the patterned fabric it looks a little bit too busy. So I'll use the sort of striped fabric as the top blanket or the quilt and then I'll have the crochet throw on top of there and they look quite nice together. The same as I wouldn't put the crochet throw on top of the checked fabric because again it looks too busy but as long as there's plainer fabrics breaking them up then you can get away with using all sorts of different patterns, stripes and checks or dots or circles or whatever you've got but just remember to have something a little bit more subtle in between them. So let's move that over there. Now you may recognise this fabric from an earlier video where I actually printed this myself using the wallpaper that I'm using in the bedroom. So this is a copy of that. And in that video I mentioned that although it's printed out very nicely the fabric is very thin so if I hold it up to the light like that you can see my hand through there. And a viewer, a lovely lady, suggested that I use interfacing to strengthen the fabric. So that's what I'm going to do. So I've got the iron-on interfacing here. came in this lovely little bag. And I ordered this from a company called Lovecrafts. And I can't remember how much I paid now, but it, it wasn't very expensive. And I've got quite a large sheet here. Far more than I'll need just for this one project. And iron-on interfacing is like an extra layer of material used to stiffen fabric or strengthen fabric. And it's used for things like cuffs and collars on shirts, reinforcing buttonholes and things like that. But also it can be used with jersey material to prevent it from stretching out of shape. And it can either be stitched or ironed onto your piece of fabric. So I'm actually going to iron that on. Begin by cutting a piece of interfacing to the size that you need. Place your fabric right side down on your ironing board. Place the interfacing adhesive side down on top of that. Make sure that the rough side of the interfacing is sticking to the wrong side of your fabric. Cover both pieces with a damp cloth and use your iron to bond. And that's made a huge difference to the piece of fabric. Feels a lot thicker now, a more sturdy piece of fabric. And that's completely stuck on there so you can cut the fabric and stitch it as you normally would, either by hand or with your machine. So usually I would stitch a mattress cover and sort of just stitch along each corner but this time I've just glued that into place. So again I've used the double sided tape on the bottom of the mattress foam. I put a piece of card on there as well just to stiffen that up a little bit and then I've just folded the fabric over and then just folded in a couple of strips of fabric at each side just so I've got a nice neat corner. So that will sit on there like that. And then I've cut the fabric for the undersheet and the bedspread. And the bedspread is the piece that I add the foam inside. And then the undersheet is just two pieces of fabric stitched together. And then I have them on the bed and sort of turn down the top like that. But it will actually be the flowered fabric or the floral fabric that will be showing there and then my striped bedspread will sit on there like that. And I always glue my bedding into place and a lot of people question me over that but 
as far as I'm concerned, it's just a, a display piece. I don't use dolls in my displays, so I'll never sort of need to tuck a doll inside. But obviously if you do use dolls and you like to move them around, you might want to snuggle one of them up in bed. So then obviously you would leave your bed in free so that you can get a doll in there. And the other thing as well, I think with gluing it down, it gives you that weight. So with real bedding, it would drape over the side of the bed. If you don't glue it down, it can tend to sort of stick up and look a little bit unrealistic. So that's just why I like to glue mine. And I don't dress my doll's house for the seasons either, so I'm not likely ever to want to change the bedding. But again, as I said before, this is just the way I do it. Doesn't mean that this is how it should be done or has to be done. It all depends on, on how you use your doll's house. So again, that's entirely up to you. Also, I like to hand stitch just because I find it really relaxing. So I'm going to be hand stitching these and the pillows. And I tend to make the pillows and the cushions once I've got these pieces in place. And then I can judge better what sort of fabrics I'm going to use. Okay, so I'd better get stitching. So I've stitched the under blanket and the bedspread or the quilt and basically just stitched the two pieces of fabric together. And then with this piece, I just glue the seam together. So just tuck it in like that, bit of glue and pull it tight so you've got a nice neat seam. And because that's going to be covered with the quilt and the crocheted blanket, you don't actually see that part. So it's all nice and neatly hidden away. And then with the quilt, I use this foam wadding to line it. And this is actually quite thick. So what I do is I separate it. I pull it apart so I'm just using half the thickness. Otherwise it can tend to look a bit, little bit chunky. So I like to separate that and just use part of that to fill the quilt and then again I'll glue along that bottom seam and then I don't actually fit these to the bed or fold them over until I've made the pillows because then I can see where everything needs to be positioned and then I'll actually fold these down and glue those into place as well. I've also made my pillows and cushions and in the video for the double bed I give measurements for all of the bedding and the cushions and pillows so I'll link to that video at the end and I make the pillows and cushions in three pieces so I have a section for the front and then I use two sections for the back and that way you get the seam along the back rather than along an edge which can sort of tend to curl the cushion upwards so if you want to keep it to, to more of a, an oblong or a square then use the three pieces of fabric. I then fill my cushions using sesame seeds and that just gives them a more weightier look. And again, I go into that in a bit more detail in the other video. And then I glue the seam at the back together, fold it in and that gives a nice neat edge at the back. So now I've got the pillows and cushions made, I'm ready to dress the bed. completed bed and I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. I think the colours go together really nicely and I'm looking forward to trying this in the guest bedroom. As I mentioned in the tutorial you'll find details of all the bedding in that double bed video and I'll pop a link to that at the end and you can also find a tutorial for the granny crocheted granny squares and I think that's part three of that same bed tutorial. So do have a look at that as well if you fancy having a go at miniature crochet. And if you do have a go at making this bed, I'd love to see how you finish yours. And you can share photos in my Facebook group, Little Bits and Pieces by You. Well, that's it for now. So thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon. <laughs>